in the last lecture we had many examples and through those examples I tried to explain to you the concepts that you have learned in this part of your course. We learned for example that the donor energy level is very close to the conduction band and the acceptor energy level is very close to the valence band. We also learned that in the case of carbon diamond especially diamond is an insulator therefore this difference uh, this gap energy gap is of the order of 5.5 electron volts and in the case of silicon it is only 1.1 electron volt and for germanium it is 0.7 electron volts. So, we learnt all these things through examples in the last lecture. Now, in this lecture as I promised we shall have now two p n junctions placed side by side and uh, this whole arrangement is called a transistor. So, or a bipolar junction transistor, bipolar junction transistor junction because there are two junctions and transistor the name I will explain in a moment. So, we will have having learnt the basics of p and n type semiconductors and the characteristics and the utility of the p n junction it is time to think of a device which has two p n junctions placed side by side or back to back. Of course, these junctions are produced in the same crystal I have this I have emphasized again and again they are they are part of the same crystal they have been doped in the same crystal and uh, the next slide shows the essential structure of the transistor. This is a not a an accurate diagram because this is just to show you actually this base P we have a P type semiconductor sandwiched between N type semiconductors and this P is called the base and this base is actually very thin and emitter the doping of emitter and collector is also different. Emitter is highly doped to have more electrons more carriers and collector is doped only to make it conducting. So, there is a difference in doping and there is difference in thickness and this base is very thin and this is we could have P n and P also this is n p n transistor we could have P here n here and p here. So, we would have p n p transistor the overall structure would be similar the base would be very thin and emitter and collector would have different amounts of doping. Emitter is highly doped collector is slightly doped to make it conducting. So, we can have n p n transistor or p n p transistor these are the symbols for the n p n transistor and p n p transistor the emitter is shown by an arrow and collector is without an arrow and base is shown like this. So, this is a symbol of an n p n transistor if the arrow is goes inside then it is a p n p transistor that is the base is n and these are p and p emitter and collector are p type semiconductors here the base is p and collector and emitter are n type semiconductors and here are the voltages between the various uh, layers this v e b is the voltage between the base and emitter v e b is the voltage between base and emitter base and emitter and v c e is the voltage between again base and collector and v c e is the voltage between emitter and collector this is the these are the symbols we shall use the battery in this circuit would be denoted by v c c in this circuit the battery will be denoted by v e e or sometimes by v b b depending upon the connections. So, these are the symbols and the n p n and p n p transistor symbols are here the direction of the emitter arrow in the two cases helps recognize the two types if the arrow is coming out it is n p n transistor if the arrow is going in as in this case then it is a p n p transistor the bias voltages are here various bias voltages are shown here. The working of n p n and p n p transistor is identical except the polarities of the potentials applied are reversed in the two cases for example, if we had this is n p n if we had p n p then this polarity would be reversed and this polarity would also be reversed that is the only change 
otherwise functioning of both npn and pnp is almost identical only thing is in pnp case the the polarities are reversed with respect to the npn case now this is how the transistor comes about we have one junction pn junction here and one pn junction here and as i have explained in the last lecture we have a depletion layer we have a depletion layer and we have accumulation of charges on both sides that is these are the potential barriers potential barrier in the np case is like this here in the pn case it is the opposite so these are opposite polarities so we have two junctions np and pn we have two junctions they are depletion layers and this is the base this p forms the base this is npn this forms the base and as i have explained this base is really very thin and emitter is highly doped collector is only slightly doped as i have been saying all along the continuous diffusion of charges across the junction results in accumulation of charges on the two sides the charges set up an electric field or a potential barrier here are the potential barriers which work against further diffusion these potential barriers they disallow further diffusion or discourage for the diffusion when equilibrium is established there is no net flow of charges across the junction if it is desired that the charge flows across the junction the potential barrier or the equivalent battery must be overcome this is done by forward biasing of the junction this we have learned you see if i want the charges to go from here to here i must overcome this potential barrier if i want charges to go from here to here i must overcome this potential barrier and these potential barriers are overcome by giving various uh, biases forward bias or reverse bias the emitter based junction is always forward biased i'll show you in a moment the collector based junction is always reverse biased the emitter is heavily doped in contrast the collector is lightly doped just enough to make it conducting the purpose of differential doping is to create a large density gradient you remember that electrons will diffuse to a region where their density is lower than the density here so we create a large density gradient by doping them differently so the so that electrons can flow from a higher density to a lower density so the purpose of differential doping is to create a large density gradient of electrons to help them diffuse from emitter to the collector when the emitter based junction is forward biased the large number of electrons in the emitter are pushed to diffuse across the base into the collector the name emitter must now be clear you see when it is the emitter is forward biased it sends lot of electrons to the collector that is why it is called emitter as if it is emitting electrons so this uh, emitter sends when it is forward biased sends lot of large number of electrons to the collector and therefore this is known as emitter and that is why that is known as a collector because it receives electrons it is known as collector so once again the same figure we have npn i am trying to show this over and again so that you get to understand what is going on the base as i have said already is kept very thin so that the electrons stay there for a very short time you see electrons which are coming from the emitter will stay in the thin uh, base for a very short time and go away if it is not a thin one then electrons would be absorbed or will uh, come uh, in contact with the holes in the base so to avoid this the base is made very thin electrons just pass through the base and go to the collector the typical distance traveled by an electron before it combines with a hole is called a recombination length and the the thickness of the base is kept smaller than the recombination length so that the electron doesn't recombine with a hole the probability of recombining with a hole is very small and the electron just passes on to the collector a few holes may also be pushed into the emitter and contribute to emitter base current of the you know the, the there are various energy levels particles have various energies and some have higher energies they can diffuse 
on the two sides. So, some holes can diffuse from the base to the emitter and this gives rise to the emitter base current. So, once again I am showing you this block diagram. This blue line, blue thick line shows the direction of motion of electrons. Electrons move from emitter through the base to the collector and then they are circulated around. So, the electrons flow like this. The conventional current as you know is in the direction opposite to the direction of electron flow and therefore, this black line shows you the direction of the conventional current. So, this current electrons flow like this current flows like this. So, the emitter base electron flow is like this blue line and therefore, the current emitter base current is in this direction. Similarly, the current in the base collector circuit is like this. So, this shows the working of a transistor. Electrons coming from the emitter to the collector through the base, the base is very base is made very thin. We cannot show it so thin here, but it is made very thin so that electrons do not combine with the holes and go through to the collector. A few holes as I have said earlier can or may diffuse from the base to the emitter because the density of holes in the base is higher than the density of holes in the emitter. So, therefore, a few holes can diffuse to emitter and uh, contribute to the base emitter current. So, that is the working of a transistor. Since the collector base is reversed biased, the depletion layer on the side of the collector becomes wider. Since this is reverse biased, therefore, this depletion layer becomes wider. This is forward biased, therefore, the depletion layer is thinner on this side. So, since the collector base is reverse biased, the depletion layer on the side of the collector becomes wider. The electrons entering the collector are attracted by the favorable barrier potential and are directed towards the collector terminal. This is a favorable potential. The electrons go through this, they are attracted by this potential and go through to the to the uh, collector. The electrons entering the collector are attracted by the favorable barrier potential and are directed towards the collector terminal where they are collected and circulated through the outer circuit. That is the reason for this element to be called a collector because it collects electrons which are sent by the emitter. To collect electrons efficiently, the collector is kept at a much higher potential than the base. Obviously, because if the base potential is higher, then it will attract electrons. So, the base potential is kept lower and the collector potential is kept very high, so that electrons are all, all the electrons are collected by the collector. The result is that current flowing out through the collector is much stronger than that in the emitter base circuit. In silicon transistors, the collector emitter current is typically 100 times heavier than the base current. This one is 100 times heavier than this current because the here the potential is kept very high so that all electrons all which flow from the emitter are collected. In other words, a small current in a signal in the input produces a much larger current in the output. This side is the input. So, we emitter base current is very small, but collector base current is very high. So, a small current is magnified many times. In other words, a small current or a signal in the input emitter base circuit produces a much higher current in the output that is emitter collector circuit. A device which amplifies small signals is called an amplifier and transistor would work as an amplifier. Here again is the circuit to clarify matters. We have here NPN, here we have PNP. You can see the polarities here are reversed, otherwise there is no change. Okay? The arrows show the direction of current flow. Here the current flows like this, goes into the collector. Here the current goes out of the collector and because it is a PNP uh, transistor. How does the name transistor come about? The name transistor is combination of two words, transfer resistor. Trans resistor ka IS, we take ISTOR of the resistor and transfer TRANS. So, we take this and this and the word becomes transistor. 
this name was given to it by its creators the name was explained in the following words this is history you may not worry too much about it because it is a resistor or semiconductor device which can amplify electrical signals as they are transferred through it from input to output terminals so transferred and resistor so you can combine these two and this word becomes transistor that is why this device is called transistor now this is just a um, summary of what we are going to do this is not what we have done but we are what we are going to do depending on the intended use a bipolar junction transistor can be used in one of the three regions as we shall see we can use it in the cut off region that there is no current through the transistor then it is fully off so it works as a switch and it is fully off we can use it in the saturation region that is when maximum current flows this through this then this is fully on again it's a switch but fully on and in the active region in between the two these two extremes we have a steady current through the collector and the transistor operates as an amplifier as i've been saying all along the working of npn and pnp transistors is completely analogous except that the polarities of the voltages applied are reversed the only difference is the response at higher frequencies why since the current in pnp transistor is caused by the motion of holes which are a little sluggish in comparison with the electrons the response of pnp transistors at higher frequencies is poorer than the response of npn transistors we saw in the last lecture an example where we found the diff velocities of electrons and holes we found the electrons move faster so holes are little sluggish and in the pnp transistor holes constitute the current the motion of holes constitutes the current and therefore the holes move a little slower they are sluggish and therefore at higher frequencies you can have some problem therefore at higher frequencies the response of pnp is not as good as the response of the npn transistors therefore for high frequency applications we prefer npn transistors again to repeat the same thing this is pnp you can see from the arrow the arrow is going inside so this is pnp and the if you compare with the previous figures you will see the polarities have been reversed here the current in this case goes out of the collector in the npn it goes into the collector and the current goes out of here and then into here these these two currents are going out and therefore ie is equal to ib plus ic if you use krishoff's law this if you consider this as a point then the in this the current entering this are ib going out are ib and ic and entering is ie therefore ie must be equal to ib plus ic again we shall do that in detail in the next lecture these are just the three configurations of a transistor amplifier the only thing to note is that here the emitter is common to both the circuits this is known as a common emitter here the base is common to both the circuits input and output therefore this is known as common base and here the collector is common to both the input and output circuits this is known as common collector amplifier we shall see their properties in the next lecture so we have common emitter trans amplifier common base amplifier common collector amplifier these are all npn as i have said there is no difference in the pnp case the important thing to note here is that this input and this output are out of phase so the common emitter amplifier gives an output which is out of phase with the input in common base and common collector amplifiers the output is in the same phase as the input so here the phase of the input and output is the same here the output is in a phase opposite to that of the input so we shall this has a special function therefore we shall this common emitter is actually more often used as an amplifier than these two these two have their utilities and we shall see what they can do but most of the time the common emitter amplifier is used as an amplifier since these are different circuits these amplifier circuits they are different circuits therefore they have different properties and different applications depending on those properties one of the characteristics of the amplifier circuit is shown in the last slide that is this phase difference which i have already emphasized 
the output is out of phase with the input a phase difference of pi here they are in the same phase here they are in the same phase. So, this is one of the important characteristics of the three circuits and the important thing to remember always is that the base emitter circuit is forward biased. Here in this lecture we studied the structure of the transistor. In the next lecture we shall see the input output characteristics of the transistor and uh, the properties of those characteristics and then we shall study common base amplifier and common emitter amplifier. Thank you.